This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to program the radios for transmit and receive some more troubleshooting, and we're going to be programming the MCC controller to put out a proper ID this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, this week we're going to get into several more options on uh, putting together the GMRS repeater. And this week we're going to be programming the two radios, one for receive and one for transmit. Now these are ICOM uh, 221 uh, radios and so therefore we need to utilize an ICOM piece of software and uh, we just happen to have that software. Don't forget to press that like button here in the video folks. and. Uh, we're going to be programming a number of options here. Now, we're just going to quickly go through some of the pages. We're not going to go through each and every feature, but there is documentation that we have that shows what we need to set at each one of these screens, both for the receive and the transmit. For instance, on the receiver, we don't want to uh, have it transmit at all or even have the opportunity, so we can actually inhibit transmit. Here we're actually doing the cloning software on the uh, receive radio, finishing that up successful then we're going to move on to programming the transmit radio uh, and again uh, it will need to receive and then transmit uh, out and again not going to go through all the steps in the actual programming part here but just to show that there are a number of pages that we need to adjust and potentially double check that they are set correctly and then we clone the transmit radio so that it will be ready to do its part in the repeater. Uh, this clone software makes it very easy and with good documentation uh, makes it a relatively easy proposition. Not much, not unlike programming an HT or a base radio. Here we're looking at the individual radios and we have the cables connected. Remember we made custom cables from a serial cable that we just cut in two and then we patched those cables into the termination panel. So now the radios are fully connected coming into the termination panel and we can see that MCC controller there on the right hand side. Now one of the things that we uh, started to do was we wanted to begin connecting everything in the termination panel, the receive radio, the transmit radio, and the controller so that all the pieces would work together as one team. And so we were double checking our voltages uh, to make sure that the pins were uh, putting out the proper voltages or not, uh, depending on what a given uh, pin was supposed to be doing. There's transmit, TXA, there's a dimmer, there's PTT, there's a detector, there's a horn, there's a number of these. And so we're labeling uh, what is in the documentation to our termination panel stickers, if you will, on the top of the lid so that we have documentation of how these wires and ultimately how the bridges are actually terminated to make sure that we're connecting everything that needs to be connected where it needs to be connected. This is moving over to the uh, the documentation sticker for the actual controller where some of the wires from the transmit and receive radios will come over to this uh, controller bridge. And so again, good documentation will ensure that you're putting everything where you need it to be. Now as we finish up uh, labeling uh, each of the, uh, the uh, termination uh, elements on the bridges, uh, we began to again double check those voltages, voltages to make sure that we are getting everything that we're supposed to get. And we found out that we were not. <laughs> So when you get into these repeater builds, you, uh, you start looking at everything and you go, what am I missing? We even connected the radios to the service monitor just to make sure that uh, they're working and that we have them connected correctly. Everything seemed to be really good there. Uh, the uh, receive radio opened up with the tone of 118.8. We were adjusting its sensitivity as well. And uh, But when we were trying to see if the radios would actually open from receive over to the controller to the actual transmit radio, it wasn't working as we had hoped. And so we started uh, troubleshooting. 
Once again, uh, if we uh, transmit, are we getting a voltage, which would be an active high coming out of the radios? And is it on the right pin uh, within the termination panel? And no, <laughs> it was not. So we got out LEDs just to double check that we're getting voltage. Uh, the multimeter, of course, you saw just a moment ago. And uh, we just uh, we just started kind of pulling our hair out because it wasn't lining up with what we had just labeled, what was in the documentation. And uh, we had double checked all of these termination blocks to make sure that they tone correctly based on pin one to pin one and so forth. But we were having no luck, no bueno uh, on uh, getting what we thought we should be getting out on the correct pins. So we uh, basically dropped back and punted because we needed to think about this a little bit more uh, since we weren't getting what we were expecting to get on some of these pins. So we moved on to the controller. Let's just think about the wiring a little bit later. Let's move on to the RC1000 MCC controller from Microcomputer Concepts. And uh, we have documentation on this as well. AC4DM happens to just have one of these, uh, 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 I guess you would call it a rig to help program the controller, but it utilizes DTMF tones. We have a speaker there so that we can hear the tones and it should be able to actually bark those tones or play back those tones to us once it is programmed. So we have the controller connected to the rig and we're going to get in there and start trying to program. This is the latest revision or version of the uh, the MCC controller that ACC uh, AC4DM had available. We're connecting the power to the rig. You can see the DTMF keypad there and we're also attaching the speaker so that we can hear the tones and have it have the controller play back those tones if it is programmed correctly. It's just momentary. Or? So we're going to uh, readjust the power here and see if it'll at least play back the initial tones. Alrighty, so now the controller is playing back the tones. We're going to begin the process of programming. No bueno. <laughs> now the controller's not cooperating. So we go back to the documentation. Are we putting in the right code to put it in programming mode? Again, it's DTMF based codes and we, we couldn't figure it out. We couldn't get it to accept any codes. We couldn't put it in programming mode or anything. We had already created our script for putting in the ID, the CWID, and that's what we're looking at here. And we were also double checking the board. Uh, there's a JP1 uh, bridge that you can uh, uh, short or leave open for a cons uh, an active high or an, uh, an active low. And we decided that that wasn't the problem. And we decided that there was something about the board that just wasn't accepting the commands. So that means hooking up a different board and putting in the program tone. that time we got a reply back. That reply back means the board is ready for programming. And so I'm going to work on the programming side on this board. Now on the previous screens you saw that kind of script that we had laid out. That's all based on which keys to press uh, and uh, stars to uh, utilize as a delimiter. This is the stop on the first digit. This is the stop on the second digit as well as a pound sign at the very end to say that we're finished with the programming of the controller. And so this takes a little bit of time and effort but uh, once you have that script written out and you follow it to the letter so that you get the right CW tone out, everything should work out just fine. Isn't that beautiful? So now our controller is programmed and if it is working correctly with the radios, then we should have no problems. And now our controller is out of programming mode. Now we went back to the wiring. We knew we had a wiring issue. We had four of these OPC 617 cables around and uh, we had used two of them 
in the radios to uh, to uh, begin our build process, but we weren't getting the voltages on the pins that we were expecting. And so AC4DM said, we got to go back to uh, uh, troubleshooting here. Um, in IT, we would call this layer one, which is the physical layer. we got to make sure the physical layer is exactly what we expect it to be. And uh, we started literally creating diagrams of each of the cables to make sure that they matched. Because when we eyeballed the color codes and where they were plugged in, they weren't matching. So we're having to build maps, wiring maps, between the pin and what's coming out on the actual um, connector, the serial port connector, to make sure that it matches what the documentation was showing us in the book that we had. And uh, so we went through all four of the cables that AC4DM had, and we found that we had three variations. Yes, you heard correctly, three variations in how the cables were built. They're all labeled OPC 617s, but they weren't all the same. We had to find two that were the same, or at least two that were near the same, but documented in our little book here so that we can make sure TXA goes to the right place, PTT goes to the right place, and so on, COS. So we're double checking the uh, the documentation that we had, the schematic, and of course AC4DM can read a schematic like a regular map just fine. And we're just double checking these cables to make sure that they're supposed they're actually wired the way you would expect them to be. So we're documenting all of this because we were really at a loss. Uh, and when we did find that we had three variations in the cables, again, then it was a matter of finding two cables that were identical. And thankfully, two were, in fact, identical. Now, this is the pinouts that we got after we, after we just toned it. It didn't match anything. <laughs> it, I think maybe one or two pins matched what was in the documentation. The rest of it was totally off, which was why we weren't getting the voltages on the pins that we needed to go into the controller and out. The other thing we had to do is open the radios back up because we didn't know what these cables were actually pinned out. We had pinned two cables that weren't in the radios to see how they were currently wired, but we also needed to do the pinouts on the cables we had already installed in the radios thinking they were identical. Back to work, you know, drawing the uh, wire maps to make sure that these cables were pinned out the same. and. Uh, so we're, uh, we're basically building documentation for all four of the cables that we had. Then to shorten it up a little bit, eventually we got all four cables toned and uh, we found that again two were identical, two were similar but not even close to the other two. But we took the two that were identical and they actually did match the documentation in the guide that we had. That's right, yeah. There we go. So now we found two cables that are identical. We've got them mapped out, and we can reinstall those in the radios. So finally, we know where our, our pins are going, and we know what, where the voltages should be, and all we have to do is just match two cables together. And if you look, these two were similar. These were two that were similar, and then we had one or two that were just totally off. So we put those cables back in. We hooked up a dummy load to the transmit radio. And now we want to double check that uh, the transmit radio is going to put out the, uh, the wattage that we need for our setup. So we're utilizing a uh, strength meter there. We've got a PTT plugged in to the front of the transmit radio. And we're going to hold down that uh, PTT and see how much wattage we're getting. Now originally we had, uh, there's three settings on these radios, low one, low two, and high and we were thinking low one or low two was probably going to be in our best interest but with line loss and uh, loss of the uh, duplexer we were finding that the two low settings really weren't going to give us enough power out so this is actually on the 20 watt scale and you can see on low one was very very low even on low two wasn't that high so we ended up going to the high setting and we were going to get right around about 27 watts out which we'll see here towards the very end this is just finishing up don't forget to hit that like button. So back to the programming, we didn't have high as an option <laughs> because we didn't think we needed it. So we had to add the option to put it back into a high power mode. So we had to uh, reprogram it. Clone OK. Press that PTT. Now we're on the 200 scale this time, but you can see we're at 
just underneath three, which would be about 27, 28 watts. And that's what the service monitor was also showing us. So that matched up with all the loss from the cable and the duplexers. Coming up, part six in the GMRS repeater build. We're going to start buttoning up the uh, repeater, testing it, making sure that we can bring it up with an HT and that it will uh, actually transmit correctly and get the correct CWID. Next time on El Cara Ham Radio.